Good morning, beloved in God. Good morning. It's a little dreary out today, a little cold, but we'll warm up quickly, we hope. <laughs> I have some announcements for you. This afternoon there will be a meeting of an annual meeting for the North Central Region uh, of the United Church of Christ. Liz, I need to let you know that Liz Garrigan Byerly, who is our area minister, is being promoted to watch out for all of the area ministers. So now we will be getting a new area minister, so stay tuned for that. Um, I think Liz is going to continue to come on the 16th to preach for us prior to our semi-annual meeting, but I'll keep you apprised of the status of that because of her promotion. Tuesday night at 6.30, we will be discussing the ONA, and um, that's a decision we're going to make at semi-annual, so it's an open discussion for anyone who would like to participate. We'll get a Zoom link out to you this week. And also, following that discussion, we'll have our social justice meeting at 7 o'clock. Thursday night at 7 o'clock is diaconate. Next Sunday, we will begin our confirmation time with Bailey and Sophia. And the time for that will be determined, and I'll get that word out to those two individuals, young people. The hybrid worship team meets on October 13th. Please make a point at two weeks from today, if you're a member of the church, please plan to be here after church for the semi-annual meeting. That will um, we'll do a review of our church life together and make some decisions. The 23rd of October, we will be having our next book study, and this time it's going to be on... What's the name of the book again? Um, Sacred Nature. Sacred Nature. I by Karen Armstrong, who um, was a former nun in England and, and is, has now become a very respected theologian. And the book is about um, the connection to, that we have to nature and the spirituality that lies within nature and has done historically. Very good. On Halloween night, we're going to have a celebration out on the lawn for the neighbors. And if you happen to be at the store and you're looking at candy, consider purchasing some so we can hand it out to the kids that come by that night. Um, during the first hymn, we will continue to collect funds for Ukrainian relief efforts. Please keep Ruth, Art, and June in your prayers. Thanks to those who have covered the pulpit for me in my absence, especially Kelly Turcott last week. Um, I hear it was a great service. Are there any other announcements that I've forgotten? Winter Tog's time. Anything else? Let's center ourselves now. <clears throat> Let us take time to concentrate, focus our attention on worshiping our mighty God, and we begin this time together with the ringing of the bell and the time for centering.
Please join me in the call to worship. Stand or remain seated, however you feel comfortable. We were created in relationship and for relationship. We are created for God knew it was not right for us to be alone. Through Jesus Christ, God entered into a human relationship with us. We are created for We rejoice in our unity with all humanity. We are created for worldwide unity. In celebration of World Communion Sunday, you will see, if you're in the sanctuary in your bulletin and for the virtual worshippers, that all our singing together music is full of joy as we celebrate across the globe. And our first, first coming together and lifting our voices is number 420, 420 in our hymnal. And the words are coming up on the screen. And it is, I come with joy. And Kate will play it once through for us. Thank you, Kate. join me in the prayer of the day. Meet us here with all our questions and insecurities. Challenge our knowledge and certainties. Transform our beliefs and perceptions. Influence our commitments and actions. Bring us into the community to work for justice and peace. Amen. And now it is time for us to pass the peace of Christ to one another. And we will sing Peace Be With You twice, followed by the Gloria Patri. And for those in the sanctuary, feel free to move around and pass the peace of Christ with one another. And for our virtual worshipers, we invite you to think of all the people this morning you wish to pass the peace of Christ to. Thank you, Kate. It was in the beginning, is now. 
please be seated. Our first scripture reading this morning is 2 Timothy 1, verses 1 through 14. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, in keeping with the promise of life that is of Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dear son, grace, mercy, and peace from God and Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. Thanksgiving. I thank God whom I serve as my ancestors did with a clear conscience as night and day. I constantly remember you in my prayers. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith which first lived in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you also. Appeal for loyalty to Paul and the gospel. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the light laying on my hands. For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. So do not be ashamed of the testimony about your Lord or of me as his prisoner. Rather, join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. He has saved us and called us into a holy life not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. His grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. And of this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. That is why I am suffering as I am. Yet this is no cause for shame because I know whom I have believed and am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him until that day. What you heard from me keep as a pattern of sound teaching with faith and love in Christ Jesus. Guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you. Guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. This ends the reading. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please join with me in the prayer of transformation and restoration. Holy God, we confess that we think we can go it alone, that we will try to do it all, that in doing so we neglect the gifts you have given us, the bone of our bone, the flesh of our flesh, the bodies you created, and the relationships you created us for. Jesus Christ, you who lived in a human body, call us to community. Remind us that in you we are one. Awaken us a respect for one another and celebrate with us the diversity within that unity. May it be so now and forever. Amen. You are the divine creation. 
and it is not right for you to be alone. Know now that you are forgiven and called back into relationship with God and with one another. Amen. So I want you to think about, as we enter into this time of thinking about worldwide communion, I want you to think about a family dinner, maybe a special family dinner, a holiday perhaps, and think about the people you might invite to that dinner. And you have to think about, I don't know about your family, but in my family now, there are certain dietary restrictions that you have to think about when you plan a meal. My daughter has severe dietary restrictions. One of her friends has severe dietary restrictions. So when we all got together for Christmas last year, I had no idea what to cook. Had no idea because the list of restrictions was so vast. And it was nice that my daughter's best friend who loves to cook offered to do all the cooking Ooh. for Christmas Day Given everybody's dietary restrictions, she had recipes to accommodate all of them. So that was a great family meal. Yes. Just provide the housing and the dishes and the silverware, right? An easy way out. An easy way out. So caring for one another's restrictions and needs is what part of worldwide communion is about. We all have our restrictions given our denominations. We welcome to the table people who think a little differently than we do. We think of people worldwide, churches that do things vastly different from our own polity and structure. But we come together today, worldwide communion, to feast on the memory of Jesus and the significance of Jesus Christ in this world long ago and that impact that still plays into a factor today. So I want you to think as we get ready for communion this morning about all the variety in the world, all the variety that it brings to this special day. So let us go to God in prayer. Dear God, as we feast this day and share a holy meal, we ask that we be enabled to care and watch out for each other. Even though we have our differences, we have this one strength, this one woven factor, fabric that runs through. Let us take care of one another and reach out to one another, especially in time of need. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And... <clears throat> As we again stand and raise our voices for the singing of number 579, number 579, Standing in the Need of Prayer, um, you'll see that some of the music this morning is also selected by the worship planning team uh, to honor World Communion Sunday, as Pastor Marilyn has referred. We're looking at pieces that come from across the world. So, everyone... If you're more comfortable remaining seated, remain seated. If not, spring to your feet and we will sing Standing in the Need of Prayer after Kate plays it for us once. Thank you, Kate. <laughs> It's me, it's me, oh Lord. 
seated. So we have a vast list of prayer concerns that you'll find in the bulletin and those that have been lifted up during the course of the last two weeks. And let us speak now of prayer concerns that we bring forth, especially this day. Yes. Thank you for mentioning that. And also, I, I was, my heart was happy when I walked up the stairs, and somebody had put a little rock that they used to put out there by the stairs. It's purple, mm -hmm. and it's so beautiful to see that little rock. So I think as silly as that, but I mean, it just makes me feel happy. So whoever put the little rock there, I'm happy that she <laughs> <laughs> made me happy. <laughs> I don't need diamonds, just give me rocks. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs diamonds? Yes. Yeah, we can't even imagine, can we? Just losing everything. So many, so many. Other concerns? Yes, Chrissy. So prayers for Haley, Lucia, people with Alzheimer's. Other prayers. Chrissy got an award. Mm -hmm. That's a great joy. She's being recognized for her wonderful teaching skills and leadership in the classroom. And joys continue over the birth of Olive. Yeah. If you want to find out more, ask Kevin. Any other joys and concerns? I have a joy. Our meeting for the German Christmas market. It's that time of the year again. I'm getting so excited. Such a good time. So it's coming along great and it's just joyful. So help out everybody. Get involved. <laughs> Any uh, concerns from uh, our uh, virtual I, I, people? I, I have a joy. Yes. I have a joy. Um, Dino Sapantis, I don't know if people know Dino Sapantis, who was very, very, very sick with COVID over really a period of several months. I mean, it's very, uh, so there was a joyful celebration down at Turner Hall yesterday afternoon. There was Dino looking truly wonderful and the room packed with people. So it was a great joy and a real, well, as, as his wife Tina said, a miracle, a miracle. So um, that was just wonderful. Um, so, yes, um, 
I, again, am looking at my cell phone and inviting anyone who is not present in the sanctuary but either watches the live stream or watches at some later date the recording. Please, you know, if you have joys and concerns, let us know either write in the comments section on the Facebook pages or send us an email, email wherever you may be and that we may add your joy or your concern for, to our prayer list this morning and going forward. So we have nothing in the comments section right now. So. Okay. so let's go to God in prayer. As we remember and celebrate the gift of the bread and the cup, O oh Lord, help us also remember and celebrate the gift of the table, the table you prepared even in the midst of imminent suffering like we've experienced this week with our siblings in Christ and all in Florida and other places the table to which you welcomed even those who would desert and betray you, the table from which you shared your life with all. As we remember and celebrate the uniting gift of Holy Communion, O Lord, help us and all your churches to be the holy table, the table that offers grace and Sabbath, to this ever anxious and breathless world, the table that always has one more seat, even for our enemies, the table that brings together the best and the worst, both within us and among your people, the table that only knows how to welcome and serve for and with all. This day, O oh Lord, we think of the many that have been lifted up in prayer this morning. We lift up Lucia and all those with Alzheimer's, those who have been in the path of the devastation of the current or the past hurricane. We lift up Haley, lift up celebration for Chrissy, lift up celebration for the arrival of Olive, for the German Christmas market excitement. We celebrate with Dino, and we think of so many in our midst and beyond that we have brought with us to church this morning on our thoughts and minds, and we lift them now up to you in prayer. We lift up all these thoughts and concerns and joys unto you, O oh Lord, who surrounds us with your love each and every day. Amen. A scripture reading from the Gospel of Luke, the 17th chapter, verses 5 through 10. And this particular passage goes like this. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. He replied, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it will obey you. Suppose one of you has a servant plowing or looking after the sheep. Will he say to the servant when he comes in from the field, come along now and sit down to eat? Won't he rather say, prepare my supper, get yourself ready, and wait on me while I eat and drink? After that, you may eat and drink. 
Will he thank the servant because he did what he was told to do? So you also, when you have done everything you were told to, should say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done our duty. So ends the reading. A moment of holy humor this morning. How to get to heaven. A teacher asked the children in her Sunday school class, if I sold my house and my car, had a big garage sale, and gave all the money to the church, would I get into heaven? No, the children all answered. If I cleaned the church every day, mowed the yard, and kept everything neat and tidy, would I then get into heaven? Again, the answer was no. Well, the teacher continued, then how can I get into heaven? From the back of the room, a five-year-old boy shouted, you gotta be dead. <laughs> Oh dear. Let us go to God in prayer. <laughs> dear God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our holy rock and redeemer. Amen. Amen. The increase our faith notion is one that we can all relate to. We are invited to consider the small size of a mustard seed, and then having faith is compared to it. We don't need much to get us through, we are told. Yet I struggle with that. Who among us wishes for less faith? It's not the way it is. We want more. And to borrow a phrase from an old commercial, we want it supersized. Cheryl Lindsay puts it this way. Jesus is having a conversation about seeds and trees in response to a simple yet complicated request from his disciples to increase their faith. It's simple because the ask is direct and narrowly focused. It's complicated because it revolves around faith, and that's always complicated. Seeds can also seem to be simple. They're small in size, and Jesus references the smallest known seed during his time. Yet they have a narrow focus and function. If you plant a seed, it will grow into some plant, shrub, or tree. A seed like our faith can exist as it is, but is intended to lead to so much more. The Bible brings up a lot of questions, as this scripture reading from Luke does this morning. And some of it is beyond my understanding. That last part of the scripture reading leads me to think about all sorts of questions and deep questions as well. So that's why I like the confirmation booklet I've selected to use this year with Sophia and Bailey entitled New Directions for Holy Questions. It lets young people know that us adults don't always have all the answers that they might want. But it invites them to ask good questions nonetheless. And we work with them together. In the midst of lifting up good questions this morning, this much I can tell you today, it is Worldwide Communion Sunday. Even though we'd like to have a supersized faith, 
we are reminded that having faith at all and having our questions is a good thing. We look to our siblings in Christ this day and ask for the world's wisdom to some of the toughest questions and issues. We know we cannot go it alone, and we do not have to. We realize that when we as individuals or groups struggle, we can rely on each other to rise above and bring about prosperity and promise. We reach out to those across the globe who profess Jesus as Lord and Savior and invite each other into a time of a family meal. And this meal transcends all others. We are globally and collectively being brought into community to remind ourselves that we are not alone. May God grant us to come into more faith by realizing we have partners in Christ all across the globe. And the realization of that notion is intended to lead to so much more. May it be so for you and for me. Amen.
As we enter into the time thinking about offering financial gifts to the church, it takes a village to keep things going. So we invite those who are here and those who are watching us virtually to consider giving a gift to the church. In light of that, I read the invitation to generosity. In communion with one another, let us share what we have received, knowing that we are one flesh with all humanity. Let us pray together. God of all creation, breathe your life-giving breath upon these gifts that they might be a blessing to all flesh. Amen. And now as we move into the communion section of our worship this morning, let us raise our voices and sing the number 393, 393, one bread, one body. And Kate will play it through. It starts with the refrain, then one verse, and then we will join together with the refrain. Thank you, Kate.
seated. A story of communion and connection for Worldwide Communion Sunday. First, God created one person, but it was not right for that one person to be alone. That person had God but needed an equal, so God made a companion. So God made another person an equal, someone to share with and talk with. God created relationships. God created communion. And then God took it one step further. God looked at the many people living in relationship with one another and decided to join the community. God came to be with us as one of us, and his human family called him Jesus. And one night when Jesus sat with his community, he took bread and broke it and blessed it, saying, this is the bread of life. Then he took the cup, saying, this is the cup of grace poured out everlasting. Come, Holy Spirit, and make us one body of Christ. And I invite you at this time to take your communion set and carefully take the top piece off and the wafer. We remember on the night of betrayal and desertion that Jesus did sit with his disciples and friends in the upper room. During the meal, he took a loaf of bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is the bread of life shed for you. Take and eat. Also in the same manner, Jesus took the cup And after blessing it, he gave it to his disciples and friends. This is the cup of the everlasting covenant poured out for us. Take and drink. Let us pray together. All praise is yours, O God. You bring us to this time as siblings and community. Lead us now through each of our moments to that glorious day when all your children will gather as family. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And now let us join together to our last piece of music that we will raise our voices joyfully to is number 442, 442 in our hymnal. We are walking and it, you will see um, that there are various verses to this and I will be calling out the verses. But just to give you a heads up, it begins with we are walking in the light of God. And then the next verse will be, we are praying in the light of God. And then we are singing in the light of God. And the last verse, we are dancing. But I will call out that, those one words. Okay, so Kate would play it once through for us. If you would like to stand, this is a joyful, joyful celebration of World Communion Sunday. Thank you, Kate.
this sacred space. Live out your connection with one another, knowing that all humanity is bone of our bone, flesh of our flesh, one world communion. Amen. 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 Hey.